Hello everyone, uh, Benjamin Lindsay here, Managing Editor at Backstage. It's been a few weeks since I've been hosting one of these. I hope you've been staying well. Hello. Hey there, Grant. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? Good, good. I'm Ben Lindsay from Backstage. I'm very excited to be speaking with you today though, so thanks for making the time. Yeah, of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, where, where in the world are you calling in from? I am now up in Vancouver. We just finished our two week uh, quarantine after traveling in from the States. Okay. Yeah, I, I did read that you guys were starting a production. So that's kind of on track. Yeah, yeah we're we start f filming next. Uh, it's right at the beginning of October. So is that next week? I think it's next week. Uh, Lost yeah. track of time. In <laughs> exciting, though. Exciting. It yeah. must be good to get back in the saddle. Yeah, it's been, you know, six plus months. So uh, yeah, really lucky to have a job to go back to. Yeah, yeah, certainly. I mean, c c my understanding is that Season six was cut short because of the shutdown, obviously. So um, yep. what, what's that meant for the beginning of season seven? Are you just picking up right where yeah. unexpected yeah. stuff happened? Yeah, honestly, we don't, I don't think we know exactly how many episodes we're going to get to do this year, but yeah. I know we pick up um, essentially where we left off. We were almost done filming our second or third to last episode of season six, and we're finishing that to start that has become episode 701 okay. and then tie up everything else before we start like a new arc around like episode 704 got it all right yeah you you do what you got to do during these times i got <laughs> yeah rolling with the punches how, how has it yeah. been the last six months have you been uh staying like creatively engaged keeping the ball full have you been finding ways to do that um it's you know it, that's been the hardest part it's just been trying to like stay on top of like I feel like my own mental health has been like goal number one. And yeah. um, it's been great though. I mean, really getting time at home with my wife that I never really get. So we enjoyed that stretch of time for sure. Um, but it was really tough not getting to work. I mean, I got to do a, like a Zoom reading of a play um, for a theater in Los Angeles and mm -hmm. just a lot of personal reading of plays and books and trying to stay creative that way but a lot of internal reflection for the most part yeah i mean, I mean it, isolation that is kind of the nature of the beast i guess <laughs> keeping things internal to yourself but uh nice that you can share the space with your family and uh get yeah. staying healthy taking care of yourself certainly yeah. um well to get started here uh but backstage we're, we of course are the actors resource so in addition to the flash i'd love to kind of take a walk down memory lane with you just how you got yep. your start in the business. Um, I know that you kind of cut your teeth in as a musical theater performer, which a lot of people might not know if they know you from The Flash. Um, so how how is that transition from having that passion for musical theater and now doing something like a screen performance? Was that kind of the trajectory that you always wanted? Um, how did that kind of shape up? Yeah, that was something that I kind of dreamed of happening at some point. I, I didn't think that it would happen in my 20s the way that it's happened. I grew up in Virginia doing theater and and thought I'd end up in New York after school. Um, theater was always at the forefront of what I wanted to do. Um, and I definitely miss being on stage uh, at this point. I mean, there's nothing like that. But the transition was cool because my the first time I was ever on camera it really in a big professional way was um, guest starring on Glee. Mm -hmm. And I fresh off of a Broadway tour of West Side Story. I mean, I actually still had 12 performances left in my year of tour and had to like, they were very gracious in letting me out of the contract. And I went and started on Glee, which was a cool transition because it was a musical and I was singing and dancing, um, just trying to get used to the, you know, being on set and being on, sure. being on, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better transition in terms of a theater performer to glee's the place to <laughs> kind of sharpen your teeth there, certainly. Um, I'm breaking up a little. I can't. I don't know if it's me or you. Oh, am I, am I breaking up? Yeah, you're blurry right now, which was fine, but the sound kind of started to cut out just then. All right. Well, I'll keep an eye on my Wi Fi here. Um, it's looking okay. You're looking okay to me. Okay. Um, you you let me know if it gets too much and we can uh disconnect restart do whatever we got to do Some, sometimes yeah. these online interviews you just never know no i know i mean i 
I'm sorry I had to cancel the first time because we didn't have Wi-Fi during our quarantine. Oh, yeah. So, you, yeah, you're speaking first. You know how it goes. Yeah. Um, well, in terms of, I did want to ask about m musical theater. You went to a performing arts high school um, and then got your job while you were still in your undergrad program. Um, at what point did you realize that this was something that you could actually turn from a passion to a profession? Um, I think it was kind of always, I've talked about this before, but it's like a weird thing where it's always what I knew I wanted to do, but I wasn't necessarily thinking like, oh, this is my profession. It was always my passion first. And I've been really, really lucky. And I've just kind of followed um, what my passion has been. Um, and that I was in high school uh, uh, called the Governor's School for the Arts in Norfolk, Virginia. And then um, was getting a BFA in musical theater at Elon University in North Carolina when I booked West Side Story. And that was my sophomore year and I left to do that. So I guess that was the moment where I knew it was a reality that like I was going to actually get to do this. Mm. But I always, I mean, for like can be pretty self-deprecating and like lack confidence. I think I always like had this thing where like I just knew it was good, what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't have that, whether it was doing regional theater or getting to be on Broadway or eventually having a film and TV career. I just always knew it was what I was going to do. There wasn't ever really a backup career I had in mind. Yeah. I mean, having that confidence is part of the name of the game. I think you got to, yeah. you got to go in knowing at least to yourself that you're doing the right thing and kind of go from there. Um, right. Is there any piece of advice that you would give your younger self when you were first starting out? You've been at it for a few years now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think a advice I'd love to give myself even today, but especially when I was younger, is to just t try to have less self-doubt and anxiety about everything that you throw yourself into, because it's so easy to just doubt yourself and, and to let ang anxiety, you know, especially for auditioning, kind of take over. Mm -hmm. uh, and to just, you know, only I can bring to the table what I can bring to the table. And if somebody else gets it, it's because it wasn't meant to be mine. And to just kind of focus, stay focused on that. Do you still, maybe not today, considering the state of things, but do you find yourself in the audition room pretty consistently while filming the show? I, I still make tapes very, yeah. like throughout Flash, I still, there's usually a time of year that they heat up for me because my hiatus is really narrow. It's two and a half months in between seasons. Mm -hmm. So it's, borderline impossible to really line up anything um so usually though like that whole after christmas that second half of the season leading up to when i'm done in april may where i make a lot of tapes where sometimes it's like three weeks sometimes i don't do some for a couple weeks but we i still make a lot of audition tapes it's yeah. been a while since i've been in the room because of being up in vancouver though yeah fair enough fair enough i mean that is the nature of the beast i guess um yeah What's your best piece of audition advice? Um, I think, yeah, I just touched on it. It was something that I heard Brian Cranston say years ago, and it's just that only you can bring to the role what you're going to bring to the role and to not get caught up in your head about what you think they want, what you think the character's supposed to be, what mm -hmm. another actor might bring to the role. Um, just, you know, focus on what makes you you and what you can bring to that character. Yeah, certainly, certainly. Well, I am curious in hearing a bit about how uh, your musical background informs this take on Barry Allen. Um, before we get there, though, we have an audience question from Jim Jam Jordan. So thank you for writing in, Jim. Um, asking if there's going to be another musical episode, because, of course, that literally uh, applied your musical theater skills. Yeah. One. Um, do you know if that's in the cards? Um, I haven't heard any talk about it. I know when I've personally been asked about it we're not like no one's like itching to like do another musical episode <laughs> i feel like we did it um i i'm more interested in like if we're gonna have singing on the show or like dancing to like try to incorporate it into the reality of what's going on with our characters you know to like try to have us singing like what i think it was season one we did like a karaoke bar scene or like try to incorporate it in that sense somehow um but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always like interested to sing and perform again on the show if possible. But I feel like we did the musical episode. Yeah. I feel like we have to make it to like season like ten to like do another one at this point. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a pretty stellar entry, so no need to mess yeah. up. 
yeah <laughs> um but do, do you feel like your your training in that sense whether it be the physicality of a dancer performer do, what, what are you bringing from your training to something like barry yeah i think the dance background has been huge i mean i actually i the, i started dancing because i was obsessed with the film singing in the rain and thought mm -hmm. gene was like the coolest um the, the, just the coolest performer um and i started my mom convinced me to start tap dancing at eight because of that and like i really resisted dance classes and dancing in general even though i clearly was attracted to it um and something that people always said to kind of get me into it was like well you know like a lot of athletes do ballet or like this per you know to other artists and other athletes use it to incorporate in their athleticism mm -hmm. and that was helped sell me as a kid and then I just became passionate about dancing but now being in this part of my career it really has helped with picking up fight choreography or mm -hmm. style what you know the running or the fighting should look like um it's definitely made me more aware of my body and I think capable of using it in different ways that act other actors might not necessarily feel like comfortable doing um so it's definitely you know I I haven't danced in a long time pretty much since West Side Story in the musical episode um and a little yeah. bit on but um it's it still has helped me a lot with just physicality as an actor yeah you got to hang on to those fast feet literally for this one so <laughs> it makes sense it makes sense um well it really is like the opportunity of a lifetime at least from an outside perspective to be able to play a role for six going on seven seasons you have various spin-off uh, spin uh, appearances with Legends of Tomorrow and Arrow and whatnot. Um, what's been the most gratifying part about playing this and how has it taken you by surprise in the years that you've done it? Um, I think going in, I knew that what the character was gonna mean to people and that that had nothing to do with me. Um, Christopher Reeve was like one of my earliest heroes. It was just mm -hmm. an Superman. Um, and I knew how much that meant to me and how much Christopher Reeve meant to me because he embodied it. So um, I didn't necessarily know, like, or was very aware that, like, that's, that I would be taking a, filling a position like that. But I do see that I, it is that for a lot of kids and even adults that I'll, I'll meet on set or various places throughout my life, um, how much this role means to people. Um, and again, I know a lot of that has absolutely nothing to do with me. And it's the fact that this character is so iconic and has been around for decades. Um, and I think what's so cool is I, I'll get to be the Flash forever. You know, people will always associate this with me. And when I meet people on the street, like, I, I think it's great or really cool when people are, you know, scream the Flash or like Barry Allen. Like, it's not like, oh, my God, that's Grant Gustin. It's, oh, my right. God, Flash. And that's really cool. Um so, I mean, that's been really special to me just to see how much this character means to people um, and, and understanding how important this legacy is and how cool, like, uh, how lucky I am to get to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Is there anything else? Um, well, I'm sure there is. What else is on your bucket list as a performer? Um, you kind of cut your teeth in the musical theater space. You're doing a uh, very popular franchise superhero thing. Um, what, what's next? What do you want to be doing? Um, all kinds of things. I mean, I, first of all, I think people assume like I would never want to do something like this again, but like, I'm even, I'm open to that. Like I would play another superhero if I was lucky enough to get to do that or another, you know, genre specific thing. Um, I've always been attracted to the sci-fi and the genre world. So like, uh, maybe this role will help open those types of doors for me. And I'm definitely down for that. Um, I still haven't, made my Broadway debut. So that's something that's um, really important to me um, that I would love to do. I just want to be on stage again. Um, yeah, again, there's nothing like that, you know, that instant gratification of being on stage and that high that you feel that natural high of performing in front of a live audience. Um, and that it can be slightly different every night, even though you're doing the same material. And, uh, but you know, as an actor, I'm, I'm very open and excited um, to get to do all kinds of things if possible. Um, I, I think indie work when this is over, I, I'm lucky enough to have such a cool steady job that it will have lasted at least seven seasons when this is all said and done. And, and I'll be fortunate enough to get to choose projects that aren't gonna like 
pay me buttloads of money just so I can do them because I'm attracted to the role or the project or the director. Um, so I, I, my, the list of things I'd like to do when this is over is very long and, and broad, honestly. Yeah, fair enough. Well, it, it really is the dream for a lot of actors out there. And I'm um, excited to see that you're getting back at work. I'm glad to see that things are being handled and taken care of for season seven production. Um, but looking through my questions here, that, that's all I have for you today, Grant. Um, it's been to pick your brain a little bit. And uh, thanks for spending some time with us. Of course, really good to meet you. Thanks yeah. for having me. It's meeting you too. And I hope that the pixelation went away. I tried to. Yeah, it did. got a lot better, actually. All right. <laughs> I can see your face now. All right, good, good. Well, um, yeah, have a great rest of your day and best of luck filming. Thank you so much.